Now this is just weird. I've made a couple of different gearboxes for robot arms in the past. The last one was a cycloidal drive, and while researching how they work, I came across the concept of eccentric cycloidal gearing. Now a cycloidal drive is designed by rolling a circle around a disc and plotting the curve that one point on the circle's diameter traces. The disc is then rolled around a series of pins, and the drive can be transmitted with rollers in the middle of the disc. This results in an efficient and high reduction gearbox. But what if we could use the same concepts with less complexity? Normally on a cycloidal drive, we would have a circle of pins around the disc. The circle of pins is offset slightly from the centre of the disc to allow the disc to roll around them. If instead though, we have a single pin and rotate this around a similar offset from its centre, we can see that this could theoretically transmit motion to the cycloidal disc. However, when the pin is on the outer part of the disc, you can see that it can't transmit as much torque as when it is in one of the valleys. We can help this slightly by copying our cycloidal disc and rotating it so the peaks line up with the valleys of the previous one. We'll do the same thing with our pin, rotating it by 180 degrees. You can now see that when the bottom of the pin is on the outside of the disc, the top is in a valley, and vice versa. This evens out the torque transmission somewhat, but it's still a bit uneven. The best thing would be for the pin to always be in a valley. We can achieve this using Fusion's sweep tool. We'll just extrude the pin along an axis perpendicular to the offset, rotating it through 360 degrees. And then we could do the same thing to the disc, but this time rotating it the opposite way around its centre, through an angle equal to 360 degrees, divided by the reduction ratio. This gives us two intermeshing bodies, which when rotated together always have the pin in the valley of the disc. If you would like to design your own eccentric cycloidal gearing, I've got a video which shows you how to design the cycloidal disc in Fusion. The link is up in the corner. I've added some sides and bearings to this model and printed it out so we can see it work. As you can see, when the pin at the top is turned, it transmits the drive to the disc at the bottom. We have, in effect, turned our pin into a single tooth gear. So the reduction ratio of this gearbox is determined by the number of teeth on the disc. A 10 tooth disc would give a 10 to 1 reduction, and 15 teeth would give 15 to 1. There should be minimal backlash, as the pin and disc are constantly in contact, and the friction is also small as the pin only ever rolls over the disc, it never slides. I'll link the CAD and STLs for this little model in the description. Please do print it. The way the pin and disc interact is fascinating. I could play with this for hours. Anyway, I've taken this concept and created a simple gearbox around it. Here you can see I've just attached a stepper motor to the pin, and added some pivots and a way to hold some 2020 extrusion to the cycloidal disc. Then there's some bearings to make it run smoothly, and a housing to keep everything in place. After a quick 3D printing time lapse, we've got all the parts ready to assemble. We'll start by screwing the stepper into place. Then we can push in a large bearing and pop the disc into it. The pin just pushes onto the stepper shaft and has a bearing popped on top. We put another large bearing into the top and then attach the top with some screws. And finally we can add some extrusion and test that it actually rotates. I'll test the torque by mounting a box 30 centimeters from the pivot and loading it with some weights. First, let's try one kilogram. That worked fine, so how about 1.2 kilos? 1.35 kilos? 1.5 kilos? Ah, that didn't work. The step is skipping. So let's back down and try 1.4 kilos. So, this little 15 to 1 gearbox lifts 1.4 kilograms, which works out at about 4.1 newton meters. I like this design of gearbox a lot. It's nice and simple with very few parts, but it isn't as compact as the cycloidal drive I made in an earlier video, as the pin has to be a fair bit larger to transmit the same torque. Please subscribe to see more interesting projects like this, click like if you've enjoyed this, or leave me a comment with any questions. The STLs and CAD for the basic model and for the gearbox are linked in the description. 
If you fancy watching something else, why not check out one of my other Gearbox videos linked here and here. See you later.